Hello again. So, a couple of months ago, I published a video titled The EGM Presentation That AAI Should Have Given. Uh, the occasion was an extraordinary general meeting that had been arranged by Atheist Alliance International to discuss some serious corruption on their board over several years. Uh, even though the board had contacted all of their members to solicit questions about this wrongdoing, and even though the stated purpose of the EGM was to answer all of those questions, when the moment came, the board decided that they didn't want to answer any questions after all. In fact, having set up a formal mechanism through which members could submit questions, several directors became quite indignant when some members actually used the mechanism that the board had created. Here's what one of the directors on the board said on that topic when addressing all of the AAI members at the EGM. This is an international organization. You guys running organizations, you know how much work it takes. Like, what type of dedication? Like, we do it with passion. How many hours can we put into it? Like, do you have any idea? Like, you answer 100 questions, and out of that 100 questions, they will find some little thing, and they'll make another question out of that. These people have become obsessed with that. And okay, for these people, I have a very clear message, actually. Go get a life, man. I also want to let you know that we have asylum cases all across the world. We have like 18 or 19 blasphemy cases right now. Those people will die, okay? It would be one thing for any board to become frustrated by continued interrogation about their behavior in a context where no wrongdoing is ever uncovered by answering any of the questions asked. In the case of AAI, however, the financial accounts for multiple years remain missing. The members who built the organization have never been told how their money was spent by an unelected board. Contrary to self-deaning laws for non-profits, the board diverted thousands of pounds raised for charitable purposes to themselves personally. Tens of thousands of dollars remain unaccounted for. And the status of AAI has now been withdrawn by the Secretary of State in California so that all powers, rights and privileges of the organization have been suspended. The members were never informed about this and in fact, even as the board spent their EGM boasting about how crucial their charitable work is to saving lives, they had by that time already been legally prohibited from using any funds for any charitable purposes for around a year. So in my last video, I described the presentation that AI should have given to their members to address these issues properly instead of the various excuses that they offered for refusing to answer questions. I described the four key issues that they were obliged to address but studiously avoided dealing with. And well, since the board of AI won't answer any questions, I will. This video will provide the true history of AAI. It will describe how a once proud organization arrived at its present sorry state. This is a story in three acts. Act one is the coup, when a small group of dishonest people unlawfully took personal control of AAI from the members. Act two is the lies, when those same people spent years lying about what they had done in an effort to cover up their wrongdoing. And Act 3 is the silence. When the current board realized that they had destroyed AAI, they spent the last year doing absolutely nothing and saying absolutely nothing. Um, before we begin with Act 1 though, we should say a little something about what AAI was before the current corrupt board took over. And taking just one example that I'm aware of from the period while I was Secretary of AAI, on 23rd of September 2016, His Excellency Mr. Nagash Kebrit Batora announced to the full United Nations Human Rights Council that Atheist Alliance International now has the floor. And at that time, the body was conducting the Universal Periodic Review of Ireland, examining the human rights record of that country in the same manner as it does for all other countries. 
Cabinet ministers and senior civil servants for the nation under review are interrogated about the shortcomings of the country that they govern. None of those under the spotlight uh, enjoy the, the public scrutiny or enjoy being shamed by their international peers. So it's a very effective forum in which to lobby and advocate for secular civil rights. Uh, Michael Nugent is the chair of Atheist Ireland, which at that time was a member group within AAI. And one part of Michael's speech to the full United Nations Human Rights Council included comments about the blasphemy clause within the Irish Constitution. Atheist Alliance International had the floor. The chairs of both major UN Human Rights Committees have strongly criticised Ireland's lack of separation of church and state. Ireland now claims that it is constitutionally obliged, not merely permitted, but obliged to allow religious discrimination in order to buttress religion, including in publicly funded schools. Ireland needs a religious equality referendum to be able to meet its UN human rights obligations. Ireland should urgently hold a referendum to remove the offence of blasphemy. The Organisation of Islamic Cooperation seeks global laws against defamation of religion. As part of this, Pakistan at the United Nations has cited specific language from the Irish blasphemy law. Heiner Bielefeld, United Nations Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion, has advised us the major damage done by this law is international. But those countries that have an intimidating anti-blasphemy practice like to quote European countries to unmask Western hypocrisy. <coughs> With regard to education, nine different sets of United Nations and Council of Europe committees have concluded that Irish schools breach the human rights of atheist and minority faith children, families and teachers. Irish schools breach very fundamental human rights like freedom of religion and belief, freedom from discrimination, equality before the law and lack of effective remedy. Ireland should oblige publicly funded schools to deliver educational services including employment, state curriculum and enrolment in an objective, critical and pluralistic manner and with no religious discrimination of any kind. Finally, we support the many recommendations to strengthen women's rights to abortion in Ireland. We support the campaign to repeal the Eighth Amendment of the Irish Constitution to enable the Irish Parliament to legislate for the right for abortion. Thank you very much. This presentation to the full United Nations Human Rights Council was the culmination of many lobbying and advocacy sessions at the United Nations offices. Human rights lawyers were briefed about the religiously inspired policies in Ireland and how the Irish constitution needed to be changed to make it consistent with human rights law. Within 12 months of this event, the Irish government announced a date for a referendum to remove blasphemy from the Constitution of Ireland, and that referendum was carried by a large majority. So that's what AAI was up until 2016, at least. And Act 1 of the story is the coup, and that begins in 2017, when Bill Flavelle was co-opted onto the AAI board. One of the first things that Bill Flavelle did was to write a blog called Time to Change. And despite the fact that he had only just become involved with AAI, he immediately concluded that lobbying and advocacy at the UN was a total waste of time. He wrote as follows. Attending meetings at the UN and addressing conferences in Europe and North America may give the impression that we are achieving things, but the payback is minimal. So now it is time for us to change. We are going into battle. We will focus our resources on helping those who need us most. Atheists in places where you are not free to speak your mind or where disastrous policy decisions are made in the name of a God. Fucking hell. If only there was some kind of international forum where you could lobby and advocate for secular policies instead of those policies made in the name of a god. If only there was some way to fix the core problem of the misguided policies instead of putting a stick and plaster on the symptoms. Good grief. This was not an auspicious start. 
But the issue with this is not just that Bill Flavelle presented no evidence indicating that lobbying and advocacy are a waste of time. The issue is not just that there is in fact mountains of evidence to the contrary. The issue is that Bill Flavelle was never elected by anyone and this decision was made without any reference to the members. Bill Flavelle was co-opted onto the AAI board during 2017 and never elected. As a result, the bylaws required that he then had to submit himself for election at an annual general meeting before the end of 2017. He was also required to seek approval from dozens of activist and advocacy organisations at an AGM for his new position that activism and advocacy is a waste of time. But he decided not to submit himself for election at an AGM and instead he just carried on acting as a director with no mandate whatsoever. In fact, in 2018, the board unlawfully changed the bylaws to take control away from the members and award it to themselves. Here's how Bill Flavelle himself described those 2018 changes in the disclosure document that he wrote during November of 2022. The 2018 bylaws took substantial powers from members and transferred them to the board. Members lost the powers to elect directors and change the bylaws and annual general meetings were abolished. When the 2018 bylaws abolished AGMs, all references to AGMs were deleted including the requirement to provide financial reports at AGMs. When the 2019 bylaws were drafted and AGMs were restored, the need for the board to present a financial report was not reinstated. So during 2018, the unelected Bill Flavelle and a few of his unelected friends transferred total control of AAI from the members to themselves personally. Not a single member group of AAI had ever cast a single vote for Bill Flavelle to do anything at all on behalf of AAI. And yet he decided that he would take control of other people's money that was in the AAI bank account. He would remove all requirements to account for what he was spending that money on. And he would ensure that there were no more elections or general meetings when he or his friends could be held accountable by the members. This is what Bill Flavelle has recently admitted to in his disclosure document. And the next obvious question is, why on earth would the members of AAI have voted in 2018 to give full control of the organization to Bill Flavelle and his friends? Well, the answer is that they didn't, because this was an unethical power grab. It was an entirely anti-democratic coup. In his disclosure document, Bill Flavelle accepts that many valid member groups were unlawfully excluded from the vote on his new bylaws, while many others were improperly added to the electorate even though they weren't entitled to vote. Since the new bylaws were adopted by a margin of only three votes, the eight unlawfully excluded voters would have been more than enough to change the outcome, especially since many of those unlawfully excluded groups were already on the record as supporting a more democratic structure for AAI. Atheist Ireland was one of the groups that had proposed new democratic structures, and we can compare how Bill Flavelle and his friends treated them with how he treated the Atheist Union of Greece. While the vote on the new bylaws was kept secret from Atheist Ireland, the Atheist Union of Greece were contacted the week before the vote and offered full AAI membership for the price of just one dollar. This nominal fee was paid by Fotis Frangopoulos, and on this entirely improper and unethical basis, they were unlawfully awarded three votes, and then immediately after the election, Fotis Frangopoulos was co-opted onto the board. Subsequently, Fotis Frangopoulos was expelled by the Atheist Union of Greece over a financial issue, but he is still the treasurer of AAI today. So there was no democratic vote to adopt the new bylaws that gave Bill Flavelle and his friends total control of AAI. There was a coup. And when people see how the vote was manipulated, with no objective criteria whatsoever being used to decide who could cast a ballot and who could not, 
the immediate reaction is often to ask, why did the valid members not complain? And the answer is that they did complain, loudly and often. And this brings us to Act 2, which is the lies. From the middle of 2018 until the end of 2022, Bill Flavelle and the rest of the unelected board lied consistently and frequently about their coup. In his November 2022 disclosure document, Bill Flavelle eventually admitted that there were no objective criteria used to create the electorate for the vote. There is no legitimate reason why Bill Flavelle kept the meeting secret from some members, whereas others were proactively contacted and given incentives to vote. We now know that he just added invalid voters and excluded valid voters based on no rationale whatsoever. For four years, he lied repeatedly about this by pretending that he invited all the groups to the vote based on the rules described in the bylaws. Here he is making that claim in 2021. We had, a, we had an AGM on, in May 2018. We followed a timetable to advise every single affiliate who was a paid up affiliate at that time. At the AGM, we put forward a proposed set of bylaws and we asked the affiliates, all the affiliates who were paid up members at the date on which we informed them of the AGM. Um, well, I just can tell you it from my point of view, which is from my point of view, we sent out to every affiliate who was paid up. On the, we, we sent, I believe that we sent out to all paid up members at the correct time. We gave them the correct notice. We gave them all the papers in the correct schedule according to the Yes, uh, you keep saying that, Bill, and it's not true. In fact, even though he has recently admitted that there were no objective criteria used to decide who got a vote and who didn't, he just invited who he wanted and excluded who he wanted, the claim that he constructed the electorate using the rules and the bylaws is still published on the AAI website today. This is just a lie. But the AAI website still states as follows. The AAI vice president, who was then Bill Flavelle, checked the records for the AGM and all were invited in accordance with the timetable established in the bylaws. John has no evidence to claim otherwise, as he has done repeatedly. So Bill Flavelle checked the records in November 2022 while he was writing his disclosure document and he admitted that the number of member groups invited to the vote according to the rules in the bylaws was precisely zero. Yet for the previous four years, he continually insisted that he had checked exactly the same records and confirmed that every single member group without exception was invited to the vote according to the rules in the bylaws. This was just a deliberate lie that was maintained for years but Bill Flavelle didn't just lie to the AAI members about this issue. He also lied to the United Nations too. The United Nations requires all NGOs to adhere to strict democratic principles, such that those involved in lobbying can be seen to be advocating for the consensus views of their members. In 2019, Bill Flavelle and his illegitimate AAI board had been elected by absolutely nobody and were representative of no one but themselves. Not a single AI member group had ever cast a single vote for Bill Flavelle to do anything at all on behalf of AI. But notwithstanding this, the unelected AI board decided to initiate an advocacy campaign by writing to the Secretary General of the United Nations in a context where the UN had been given to believe that the AI board were speaking for dozens of atheist groups worldwide. It was entirely dishonest of Bill Flavelle and his unelected friends to make a formal submission to the United Nations as if they had earned a mandate to do so from an international alliance of atheist groups. And the profoundly embarrassing submission that they did make demonstrates what happens when all accountability is removed from the leadership of an organization. It's pretty clear why Bill Flavelle wanted people to believe that making a submission to the UN would be a waste of time. 
because when he eventually did make one, he merely advertised that he does not have the first notion what the fuck he is talking about. The Atheist Alliance International letter to the Secretary General of the United Nations states as follows. The international community has made great strides over the past 60 years in articulating and protecting universal human rights, including the individual's right to hold religious beliefs and to practice religion privately and publicly. Unfortunately, none of the international human rights declarations or treaties promulgated to date explicitly provides equivalent rights for those who choose to follow no religion or have no religious beliefs. This is absolutely false, and this kind of gibberish could only be written by people who have absolutely no clue what the hell they are doing. In the past, the leadership of Atheist Alliance International was accountable to experienced and capable activists, such as the human rights lawyers employed by the Freedom From Religion Foundation, but having unlawfully expelled that organisation, along with very knowledgeable activists like the Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain, the inmates were now running the asylum. And of course, any of those competent organisations would have been able to explain to Bill Flavelle that Article 18 on the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion already protects non-theistic and atheistic beliefs, as well as the right not to profess any religion or belief. That had already been black letter human rights law for many decades, which the UN has reiterated over and over again. But the profoundly embarrassing ignorance on the part of the incompetents who are still running AAI today remains published on their website even now. Instead of explaining to atheists what their rights are and how best to vindicate those rights, Atheist Alliance International is falsely telling atheists that they do not currently have the right to hold secular beliefs. Even after they've been told many times that they are just plain flat wrong on this issue, the AAI website still today states as follows. From the Universal Declaration of Human Rights onwards, you will find a list of rights protecting the religious, but none protecting those who have no religion. You may not discriminate against a person on account of their religion, but nothing prevents you from discriminating against a person because they have no religion. This is incredibly harmful nonsense. The same Bill Flavelle that promised he was going into battle to help atheists at risk has actually been misleading those people about what their rights are. If anyone still thinks it's unfair or hyperbolic to claim that Bill Flavelle and the rest of the AAI board don't know what the hell they are doing, you might take a look at some of the other details around their right to be secular campaign that they have brought to the United Nations. It's all still advertised and promoted on their website today. Their ambitions are not modest. They say they wish to have a new declaration adopted by the United Nations, no less. Uh, having composed some new language that they plan to have the nations of the world sign up to, they then set out a plan for how they intend to convince more than 100 governments to get on board. Their website states as follows about that plan. As the team worked through the issues, it considered the best way to recruit support from governments and international bodies. The conclusion was not to write lengthy legalistic papers, but to focus instead on a pithy paragraph and a logo. <laughs> These people believed that they were going to extend international human rights law in an important area. They believed that they were going to have the entire United Nations adopt a declaration that they had written. They believed that they were going to get more than 100 governments to proactively support them. They believed that in order to create new human rights law in this way, that they would not need any legalistic papers, but instead that in order to recruit more than 100 governments to their cause, they merely required a pithy paragraph and a logo. 
these people are fucking children. And like the children they are, when asked to account for their actions, they just bury their head in the sand and say absolutely nothing. And this brings us to Act 3, The Silence. Bill Flavel's predecessors at AAI had earned participatory status at the Council of Europe for the organisation. And this status was recently revoked because AAI did absolutely nothing with it for four full years. They didn't make a single submission during that time and when asked why they had been silent during debates in an international forum, the answer to that question was silence too. The same pattern of silence can also be observed with respect to financial accountability. When asked what they spend tens of thousands of dollars of other people's money on, after they had deliberately removed the requirement to report accounts to their members, their answer has been utter silence. Here's what the self-styled president of AAI said at their recent 2023 EGM when loudly arguing that he should be silent about financial wrongdoing by the AAI board. This is stuff that happened in the past. A lot of the questions are dealing with 2017 and 2018. We need to work on our important work helping atheists. We need to move forward. And it seems like there's no convincing these guys. Like, if it was a couple of reasonable questions, not a hundred questions, I would love to have an open, honest conversation with whoever. But it doesn't seem like they're trying to help the organisation. They're trying to destroy the organisation. So if they want to have a phone call with myself and Bill and whatever to like answer like real questions, that's great. Let's do that. But I don't feel like that's the aim of what they want here. Needless to say, their members had not asked anywhere near 100 questions. And when immediately after the EGM, those same members followed up with Brian Koenig on his offer of a phone call, the response from the AAI president to that was also utter silence. But the AAI membership are not the only interested parties with respect to this issue. According to non-profit law in California, the Franchise Tax Board also needs to know how AAI spent tax-free funds that were raised for charitable purposes. For many years, the current AAI board has offered the same total silence to the state of California as they have to the AAI members, such that AAI is no longer in good standing with the Franchise Tax Board. Perhaps for this reason, the current board of AAI has very recently changed tactic in January 2023, merely a few days after AAI had told their members that nobody should be interested in how the organization was operating during 2018, Fotis Frangopoulos submitted a financial statement for 2018 to the state of California. There is some important context for this official financial submission. Initially, it is relevant that the AAI board had already admitted in their recently published disclosure document that they had not retained adequate financial records from 2017 to 2019. So they had to guess what their expenditures were for during those years. They wrote as follows. For the years 2017 to 2019, the supporting paperwork for some expenses was missing or incomplete. Consequently, it was necessary to infer the categories for these payments. AAI directors are not paid for their work, with the exception of John Richards, who edited Secular World for several editions and was paid per edition. The contract to edit the Secular World magazine had been publicly advertised many years previously and was awarded to Rustam Singh after an interview. In contrast, during 2018, the AAI board transferred this contract, which was valued at £1,500 sterling per quarterly edition, to John Richards. They did this in secret, without advertisement or tender, and at the time, John Richards was another unelected director on the AAI board. In fact, here's Rustam Singh explaining that when he was summarily fired, so that his contract was transferred to John Richards, 
he had offered to continue to work for free. That offer was rejected and instead the AAI board transferred the £6,000 per annum contract to one of their own directors. So he basically said we discussed it with the board that we would rather have the website completely crumble and have no form of physical tangible work whatsoever than pay you your due share and you were immediately fired. I was I had no form of discussion. I have the exact email I remember writing to them. Uh, that is, can I negotiate? Can I have a video conference with everybody? Can I sit and explain my finances? I literally even mentioned that if we are cash crunched right now, I can literally work for free for the next few months. And whenever we manage to pull ourselves out of the sock, maybe six months from now, one year from now, you pay me back my dues with no interest. Now, I literally proposed that because that's how attached. I know the effort I put into this place. Right. You know? So in November 2022, the AAI board had published a document stating that adequate financial records had not been retained for 2018, but that they were at least aware of paying thousands of pounds sterling during 2018 to one of their own directors. These payments to an AAI director were made from monies that AAI had raised for charitable purposes. Within regulations for non-profits, Awarding a no-tender contract to one of your own directors is called self-dealing and that is explicitly unlawful. The AAI EGM that was arranged to discuss this and other very serious financial wrongdoing took place in January 2023. At that time, the president told the members that he had no interest in what Bill Flavelle and his friends did in 2018 because that was all in the past. However, just 10 days after the president admonished the members that no one should be concerned about the events of 2018, the AAI board found their tongue and suddenly they all became very keen to tell the state of California about their 2018 financial year. This is the financial statement that they submitted for that reporting period. Having abandoned their strategy of maintaining a strict silence towards the state of California and everyone else, the AAI board reverted back to telling lies. At first glance over this submission, it seems rather surprising that all of the numbers came out at exactly round figure dollar amounts, especially given that some of the expenditures were in other currencies. Like, if you're going to invent numbers in your official financial statements, maybe try not to do it like a fucking child. More importantly though, because it's explicitly unlawful for the board of any non-profit to engage in self-dealing, question one on this form asks whether there were any contracts or financial transactions between AAI and any of the AAI directors during 2018. The board falsely denied this in their official financial submission to the state of California. Just weeks before filing this submission, the AAI board had published a document describing the payments to John Richards after awarding a contract to him in 2018. Just 10 days before filing this submission, the AAI board had a four hour general meeting to discuss that document with their members. So th this false statement in their financial submission was not an oversight. This was a deliberate lie to cover up very serious financial wrongdoing. The AAI board are refusing to answer questions about their behavior in this regard because they claim that those asking the questions are trying to destroy AAI. And ignoring for a moment the genetic fallacy in that position, the reality is that anyone who wished AI to be destroyed could most efficiently do that by standing back and letting the current dishonest board proceed with their efforts. All on their own, the current AI board have managed to lose participatory status at the Council of Europe, lose their good standing with the Franchise Tax Board in California, and have their non-profit status suspended by the Secretary of State in California. It really does require heroic levels of audacity to stand over this appalling record while accusing your critics of trying to destroy AAI. The critics of the current corrupt AAI board are not trying to destroy the organization. 
they're trying to save AI from their fucking children who have unlawfully taken control of it. Eight-year-olds, dude. 